locked rotate device back okay it wants us to be here so we're live so hi um i want you guys to watch what i say to them because this is what you're can this is this is as easy as it is um i'm teaching youtube for yarn shops to a room full of yarn shop owners at tnna wave everybody <laughs> and i'm showing them how easy it is to go live on youtube so i'm gonna set you up right here it doesn't like that you're sideways and that's about where I'm standing. Now, if people want to talk, their chat is going to show up on this. Um, it's going to like scroll up. I'm not going to pay attention to them because I'm here with you guys. Um, but that's it. It really wants it to be vertical. So we'll do it like this. So I talked about a tripod. This tripod is, um, let's flip them around. This tripod is like uh, $10 on Amazon. Um, and it can you can reshape it any way you like the head rotates a bunch of ways you can even slide this off and slide it into like a regular tripod and if you have a camera or a video camera from like the 90s or the early 2000s then you have a tripod you can slide that into does that make sense so this is not expensive at all I'll set that up it's really mad that I keep flipping it around and that's about See, it wants to, you see my book stacking tripod. <laughs> um, so that's as easy as it is to go live. When I stop it, I'll show you guys what I say at the end to make sure that there's a call to action so they know the next step to take. So my video channel is full of me teaching because that's what I sell, my books and my teaching. Yours will be full of whatever you sell. So if you want to sell classes, you'll show little snippets of your teaching. You'll talk about the classes that are coming up. If you want to sell your yarn, you'll talk about your yarn where you'll feature your customers. So I wanted to show you how fast it is to go live. You could do this when anything exciting happens. All right, and let's, we'll talk about, yeah. So, yes. Sorry, so I was just trying to do this on my YouTube account and mm -hmm. it wouldn't let me, I didn't have the go live feature. Is yes. that something I have to like set up in my account? Or? You have to have a thousand subscribers before that shows up. You could record though, right now, and then immediately upload it. Right. But you can go live on your laptop right now. It's only on your mobile device. Does right. that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and they might change that. It's as they were rolling it out. That was their rule. Um, okay. So that is the technology you need. Your phone, a, t a tiny ten dollar tripod, and you don't even need that. I mean, you can lean it against things. I do that a lot in coffee shops. I like stack up my stuff and I lean it. Um, and of course, if it's on your laptop, anywhere you can sit your laptop, you can direct it. Are there any questions about that part before we get into your content plan? No, awesome. So the questions we have to answer when we talk about content is how often, which we've kind of already covered, what, and then like when, when are you actually gonna sit down to do it? Because there's no point in having a content plan if you don't actually uh, do it, right? If you don't ever create it, because there's no time in your schedule. So on page three, we're just gonna start to develop your video plan and we're gonna flip back and forth to this page. But <coughs> right now I want you to write down what do you have that you can use for a camera? You have a smartphone, write it down. If you have a laptop and you're gonna go live regularly from your laptop, write that down. And then the next question I ask is if you don't have a YouTube account, when are you gonna set one up? Pick a day. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've talked about why you need a YouTube channel, how easy it is to shoot your first video, um, pick a day. Is there a day of the week that's better? Okay, so I've read <laughs> conflicting things. Um, do, have you guys, I know you've looked this up, does your brother have advice as a professional well, he's vlogger? A daily vlogger. Right. But I do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, mm -hmm. and I have not noticed one video doing better than another. Yeah. We do the same time every, every Monday, Monday, Friday, and then we do surprise videos. Is there a time of day that's... I'm an idea person, I have so many videos. <laughs> I do it at 6.30 in the morning because a lot of people like to watch before they go to work. Yeah, yeah, um, and mine comes out, I think, <laughs> East Coast time, six or seven, and it's... Uh, I'm East Coast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. yes, yes, um, and those are scheduled. I don't, I, I don't get up at 6 a.m. Yeah, schedule everything. Right. I know Mason makes the knitting. They post at 3.30 in the morning. But I think that's because they have international yeah. schedules. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's schedules. my thing. Yeah. So my video editor is in Europe. So I don't have time to do that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And she was like, no, that's too late <laughs> because um, that would be 5 p.m. her time. And for my people in the Netherlands, it's like 6 or 7. And so she was like, we need to move it way, way up. Um, but so you want to think about your local community because you're reaching your local people. So I would do morning your time. So if you're on the West Coast, um, you maybe don't have to worry about the East Coast because you want to most, you, you're really focused on your local people mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Unless one of your goals is like to go global and to make international sales on your online site, in which case think about the global or at least the national timelines. But yeah, morning is usually better because people will watch it then. Um, I, th I think you probably want to avoid the weekends, which you guys probably would anyhow, but if you have an event going on on the weekend, go live with that baby. Don't worry about it. Like when I'm here, last year I went live on Facebook from the TNNA floor and that video got way more interaction than most of my live videos do. And then I edited it a little and then I uploaded it to YouTube and it was an episode that was great. Like it got a lot of, because people want to see what it's like. So whenever you can take your people to the places you get to go that they don't see, they're gonna be happy. And that brings us to unboxing videos. Are you guys familiar with the concept of unboxing videos on the internet? Mm -hmm. It's like a very big deal. Yes, okay, good. <laughs> so for some reason, we love to watch people open a box and pull things out of it. <laughs> like, it's like a human psyche, like our need is to watch people pull things out of a box. So you guys have the most perfect opportunity. You have boxes full of wonderful stuff every day, every week, every month coming into your shop. So you can take this little um, tripod, which also will link up this, and I have a, I work with a uh, yarn dyer who, she sent me her setup because she was like, I think you need my setup. And it's a clamp that you can clamp literally anywhere and then an arm and then, a, and then it clamps onto your phone and the arm, it's like a two elbow arm. So she clamps it to the side of her kitchen cabinet and it's like a massive, clamp and then puts it over her dye pot so you can see her squirting the yarn into the dye pots. She will then also like clamp it onto her desk and put it in front of her so she can shoot, you know, face on. It's especially helpful if you're going to do like knitting videos like of your hands. So you want something that bends and can get over your hands. This yeah. little guy doesn't do that. What's that? What's that called? It's, it's like got a technical name. I'm going to link to it on the page. It's like the S. 360 or something it's for, and and it's multiple pieces so it's a clamp piece an arm piece and then a phone clamp piece but I'll put them all together and I'll show you there because she sent me that she's like a you need this B you should tell your art shop owners to get this <laughs> so um, when you're thinking about what kind of content you, you create let's break it down in a couple ways the first is the format of your show so I'm gonna say show but you could do a series of tutorials so if you want to get people um, buying a yarn or knitting a pattern or coming to a class, you could do a knit along. And your knit along, um, Kathleen Dames does a podcast called The Sweater. And in it, you knit along for a season on one of her designs. She's a knitwear designer. And so she'll show you the tricky bits. That's what the video is about. And answering the questions that have come in that week. That's a format. It's a kind of, I'm teaching you and showing you skills. You could also just do a tutorial channel. Now, like, uh, yarn overs and knit two togethers. You could do an unboxing where all you do is it just, you set it up over, you unbox, you talk, you show them. I wanna see your face, videos with your face do better, people coming into your class, so either your face or your customer's face. You could do a, all of your channel just be stories of your customers, or you can mix it all up. You don't have to pick one format. And actually in the beginning, I would recommend you trying a bunch of different ones trying multiples of a bunch of different ones and then looking at your stats, which are really easy to see in YouTube and see which one did better. Which one got more views, which one got more shares, which one got more comments. And then which ones, you guys are in a great position of people come into your shop and tell you things. So which one got the most, somebody coming in and going, oh, I love that unboxing video. Yeah. Um, on your channel, can you arrange and have different or series of instructionals or series of unboxing? Okay. Yes, yeah, they're called playlists. And so that lets me have a playlist for my podcast, which comes out every week and has a very specific format. Also, I do like a lessons in my business, what I'm learning in my business, which is different than a lot of people I'm serving. That's a different playlist. When my mom had sheep, I have a playlist of like just the sheep eating grass. It's very popular. <laughs> um, and so you could do a playlist of unboxing videos, a playlist of customer stories. And you can just pick one and just do all of your videos are in this format because you're happy with it, you like it, 
and it's most comfortable for you. Unboxing is the simplest because you like that's all you're gonna do. You're gonna open it, you're gonna pull it out, you're gonna talk about it, you're gonna show it, squeeze it, um, you know, like you would do when customers are in the shop and you open a box. So how many of you guys have had the experience of you open a box and customers are there and everybody gathers around and they're yes, and they're all like, oh, oh, I love it. That's what you wanna create with your unboxing video because then people are gonna see this is what the shop is like, this is what they carry, it's fantastic, I'm gonna go in and get it. And really that's, oh, oh, another format we didn't talk about is there is the, how many of you guys are familiar with knitting podcasts, like, like podcasts on YouTube? Yeah, okay, so this is a big trend that I think just flies under the radar <laughs> in normal culture. But there are um, shows that have huge audiences and they're basically kind of like a talk show, but they just talk about <laughs> what they're working on, right? So it's usually one or two knitters. They pull out their projects that they're working on. They show you the yarn they bought that week. They might um, do a review of a book. And I'm gonna link to some of these in my um, on my page because I think that your customers, especially when you get younger customers come in, they're going to be talking about these knitting podcasts because they have huge audiences, hundreds of thousands of views each week, um, some of them, and there are tons of them. And they review books, and that when they review a book, the book sales go up, they review yarns, and when they love a yarn, the yarn sales go up, so they have a real impact on the industry. and. Um, so that's a, the that's a thing you can do. Each week, you can sit in your yarn shop, uh, preferably in front of your prettiest wall of yarn, where you also get the best natural light, and talk about what you're working on, what came in that week, what you're looking forward to in the week. Now the thing with that is you don't want to drag on too long, because I don't watch them because it's just, it's just like people talking. It's just too much. <laughs> like they, they often go way, on, way too long. So you want to keep it short, and you want to, ahead of time, make a note of what you're going to talk about and then stick to it, and then in the description, write what specifically you talk about. Because we talked about you being found via search, but Google doesn't know what your video is about unless you tell it. And how you tell it is in your title and in your description. So if you are going to talk about um, Malabrigo and the new Stephen West pattern and the class you have coming up, you need to write that out <coughs> in the description, because Google can only read text. Well, they're getting better image recognition, but they can't tell what you're saying in your video quite yet. I have a question. Yeah. When you're uploading your videos, does it give you like keywords that you can share? You have to come up with those yourself. We're actually going to do that on the but next page too. <coughs> yes. 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 But there's um, some rumors that this my video editor. I had her look over my notes and tell me what <laughs> what I was missing, and she said that there are rumors amongst YouTube creators that 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 the keywords you type in don't matter as much as the keywords you use in your title and in the first two sentences of your description. Interesting. So that's, like YouTube, Google never tells you what they're using <laughs> because they don't want you to game the system, but that's the... the first two words? No, two sentences. Okay. I might have said words, but I probably said it wrong. Um, so you have a few different formats, and I want you to, on page four, you can write out any format ideas that you like unboxing, tutorials, talk show, where you just talk, which is what people just call podcasts. The other um, one you can do is interviews. Now, we talked about when your customer comes in being like, you look amazing in that sweater. Um, I love that big needlepoint product you just finished. Can you tell me about it on camera? That's an interview too. Um, that's kind of like a man on the street interview, right? They come in, they're kind of unprepared. You can also do like planned interviews where you sit down with a teacher who's coming to visit you. This is what Christy's show is. It's an interview show. Mm -hmm. She has guests. She asks them questions. And um, it's a really, a lot of podcasts and videos uh, do that because it's a great way of growing your audience. Because when you interview a some big knitting superstar or needlepoint superstar, you can um, ask them to share it with their audience and you're going to get some of their audience. You're also going to get people Googling uh, Isolde patterns, and if you write, you know, Isolde interview exclusive um, in your subject line, like your video is going to come up. And especially if you get people who don't have a lot of their own videos on YouTube, when people search for them, your video results are going to come up. So that is a good way of growing your channel, but considering your guys' time constraints and the fact that you are often stuck in your own shop, you're probably going to most interview the people who can come to you. 
but when you do have a visiting teacher, ask them when you're negotiating a contract, can we sit down for an hour and do an interview for my YouTube channel? Even if you just have one of those interviews interspersed with customer interviews and unboxing videos, that's still gonna help your channel. Does that make sense? Okay, I think those are the main formats. So, uh, what, what, one thing to think about when you're picking your format is what do you love to do? And that's why I ask you at the top of page four, what do you love doing in your shop? Because the ideal content is gonna be whatever works for your shop one-to-one. -one. Someone comes in, they ask you a question, you answer their question, they love you, you're the goddess of all things knitting, they keep coming back. Those interactions with social media, you can take that one-to-many. So you can take that same interaction and just turn it into a video with or without the other person there, <laughs> right? So when someone comes in and they're like, I'm really stuck on this, can you explain it? You explain it in a great way, then I would, when they leave and the shop is quiet, turn on the camera and explain it to the camera in the same great way. Because if they had that question, lots of people have that question. So you don't have to come up with your content off the top of your head. Use what's coming to you in your business and what you're really great at and do more of that. So if you're great at teaching knitters how to learn to knit, take that to your YouTube channel. Now there are a lot of videos about that already, so I recommend doing things that are specific to your yarn shop. So maybe you're in, how many of you are in a touristy location? Like you get a lot of tourist traffic, yeah. In every class there's a couple people. You could feature your local community. So you could do every other video, or two out of three videos are about you and your shop and your customers, and then every third video is you at the local coffee shop, or at the beach, or at the pier, or at the whatever people come to your town for. And that way, because I bet your other local businesses aren't featuring your local community. So you would be a place when I'm searching what to do on Emerald Isle, North Carolina. Oh, there's all these videos from this. Oh, it's a yarn shop. Excellent. I'll stop in. So that's <coughs> something to think about is whatever your shop has special, do that. Anybody sitting in their own home can teach you how to do the knit stitch, but your shop uh, has shelves of product, <laughs> you have teachers coming and going, you have customers coming and going, you have your local community that you're a part of, you might do, um, if you have a really rowdy crowd at like a sip and stitch, get those girls on video. <laughs> <laughs> with their permission and not when they're too drunk. Um, <laughs> if you have a, like a kid's class and the kids are freaking adorable, get uh, with permission, them, their adorableness on video. And the permission can be, I mean, you can print a permission slip from the internet, <laughs> but you can also just ask, when they're an adult, just ask the adult, like, hey, are you comfortable with this going on my YouTube channel? Um, when I walk around TNNA, any place that I kind of stop for a second, I ask them like, hey, I'm recording this, for my Facebook, YouTube, it's gonna go on my website, you're fine with it. They're like, yeah. <laughs> um, because people love to be interviewed, highlighted, featured, they love um, that attention and that fact that you care to listen to them. So, I want you to think about what you love doing in your shop and how you can turn that into a video. Is it gonna just be your face to camera? Is it gonna be your hands? Is it gonna be <coughs> unboxing? Is it gonna be the customer? And then also, I want you to think about, and I have people do this in all my classes, whether it's email or Instagram or YouTube, what questions do you get asked the most often? What are the things that everyone asks you? Answer those questions in video form. And it can be a two minute video where you answer the question. Like, how did our shop get its name? Why did we pick this location? Um, how did I get started knitting? How did my, uh, I don't know, like some super cool employee you have What's her backstory? Whatever you, the people who come to your shop love to hear about and love to talk to you about, <coughs> do videos with that. Now, so those are the formats. And then the method, which we've kind of already talked about, is that you can do them recorded and edited. Like you, like I do my podcast, I sit down with a lot of natural light and a pretty background. Um, I put the camera in the right place. I have already written out my notes for what I'm gonna talk about, and then I, talk to the camera, stop it, for, edit out the ums and ahs, and then we upload it. Well, we schedule it. We upload it and we schedule it for the, fu the future date of my next podcast episode. You can do it like that, or if you don't have an editor and you wanna just start doing it, you can go live. So you can go live on YouTube, like we're doing now. You can go live on your Facebook page, which you guys all raised your hands for having a Facebook page. So that's the easiest thing. Go to your Facebook page, go to write a status update on your phone, and there's a little live option. Click it, 
you'll write this title and you'll start talking. And people's comments will pop up of people who are watching you live. If you pick a set schedule, like I'm gonna do this every Tuesday morning before the shop opens at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. and you do it every week, people will come back every week. I used to do this on Periscope, which eh, it's kind of, I wouldn't recommend it anymore, but for like two years, Periscope worked awesome for me. I did it almost every day, every weekday at the same time. People would come every day, which is crazy, because I was like, don't you guys have something to do? <laughs> Shouldn't you be like doing your life instead of hanging out with me? But um, in those videos, answer the questions, tell them what came in, do an unboxing, do whatever your content is. And if it's on Facebook, you'll end it, you'll download it, you'll go to YouTube, upload it, write the title, write the description. The main thing to remember if you're doing an Instagram or Facebook Live and people's comments are coming up is that those aren't being recorded. So the video won't show those comments, so make sure that you verbalize them. So if somebody says, I love your hair color, where'd you get it? <laughs> Don't just start saying like, oh, I got it at a box at Walgreens. Like say, oh, Julie just asked me where my hair color came from. So that, so that the people who are watching later have context. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. In the same way that if you're in a big class and somebody way back there asks a question, you would repeat the question so that everybody can hear it. That's what you wanna do when you're live on Facebook and Instagram. And then when you're done, yeah, we're, I'm going to show you when we're done because I'm going to stop this here because I don't get any more free. There are two people watching. Hey, if you're watching, you can say hi. Um, I'm going to, so this has been a little snippet of my class, YouTube for Yarn Shops at TNNA. If you want more of this goodness, you can go and get my books for my classes at tarasweiger.com. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I had to say that to show all of them how to do a clear call to action. Say that at the end of your videos. Bye, guys. So I hit finish, then I hit end.